Good morning, students, professors, and other distinguished guests. My name is Alyssa Robb, and as Carla touched on, I do compete in pageants in the Miss America organization, and one of the great things I get to do as a member of the Miss America organization is promote a personal platform. That personal platform that I'm so passionate about and that I share with the people around me is suicide prevention. Today, I'm gonna to share with you a little bit of my expertise, um, the knowledge that I have on the subject, and what you all can do to get involved as well. First of all, I'd like to share with you a picture. These two pictures right here are both of me and my older cousin, Kayla. My sophomore year here at Bellman University, she was 22 years old and she decided to take her own life. Her life was ended too soon and it's something that has affected me in such a powerful way that I'm here speaking with you all today because I'd like to change someone else's life for the better because of hers. Here are some statistics about suicide that you may not know, and it is a little bit of a hard truth. As of 2013, which is the most recent year the Center for Disease Control collected data, suicide is the 10th leading cause of death across Americans. After cancer, and heart disease, suicide accounts for more years of life lost than any other cause of death. Now what this means is not that there are more deaths due to suicide than cancer and heart disease, but that these people are dying too soon. We see more suicides happening in adolescent and young adult aged people than any other diseases or other ways of death um, that are happening. Someone in the country takes their life every 12 seconds, and if you compare this to data globally, Somebody in the world takes their life every 40 seconds. The first step toward prevention is education. What we can do is get to know what suicide is and what we can do about it and how we can identify it in the people around us before we can become a part of the solution. The American Foundation for Suicide Prevention is quoted in saying that 90% of all people who die by suicide have a potentially treatable mental disorder at the time of their death that has often gone unrecognized or untreated. The key word in this passage obviously is treatable because we can recognize the symptoms of these mental disorders and make a difference in these people's lives, but unfortunately, too many times it goes unnoticed or untreated. Some of the risk factors that somebody might face um, include a previous mental health disorder as depression or bipolar disorder, environmental factors, including access to lethal weapons or drugs, and historical factors. If a person has a family history of suicide, their chances of committing suicide actually are higher than the general public. Understanding some of the warning signs is one of the first steps that you can take to prevent suicide among the people around you. According to the warning signs listed on the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention's website, people who take their own lives often exhibit one or more warning signs, either through what they say or what they do. The more warning signs a person exhibits, the greater the risk. Notice that it says one or more of these warning signs because Far too often, so many of these people are exhibiting two, three, or four warning signs that people just don't ever pick up on because they're not educated on the topic of suicide prevention. So by understanding what these warning signs are, you can notice them in the people around, around you and make a difference in their life. Some of these warning signs as listed by other sources, such as suicide.org, and WebMD, which is an online site that you can go to self-diagnose if you're ever having any problems, are the way that people talk, the behaviors they're representing, or their mood. Somebody might say something like, I want to fall asleep until I feel better, or I just want to fall asleep permanently. This is a huge warning sign that they might be having suicidal thoughts. Their behavior might become more risky, and they might engage in some more life-threatening or life-altering activities than normal, such as skydiving or cliff diving, like you see the person in the picture doing, and their mood might drastically change. Often people who are struggling with suicidal thoughts will become more depressed. They will become more to themselves. They'll hold back their emotions, and they might be drawn back from the things that they once loved. So what do you do if you start noticing these warning signs in the people around you? 
There are lots of different resources that you can reach out to if you're not confident in talking to that person one-on-one -on -one about the issues that they might be facing. And one of those is the Suicide Prevention Hotline. This is a completely anonymous phone number that you can call or give to somebody that you think might be facing some suicidal struggles. They can call and talk to an actual person about the issues that they are facing. And from that hotline, they can seek help. Also, a lot of people may not know that psychiatric hospitals and general hospitals now have walk-in facilities where if you were to walk in the door and let them know that you might be having some suicidal thoughts, you are welcomed in with open arms and they will seek help for you. There are always other options such as urgent care clinics or your primary care physician if you're suffering from depression or mental health disorders or in an emergency call 911. One of the best things that we as students can do among the population of students that we have here on the campus is to use sensitive language. We are all under stress when it comes to finals or midterms time. And oftentimes you might see that somebody is struggling more than others. Use sensitive language around them and be, object or be objective, not subjective. You don't ever want to judge somebody for what they might be going through because you really don't understand sometimes. One of the biggest things that I like to tell people when I speak um, in front of them about suicide prevention is about the word suicide itself and how we address it. There is no such thing as successful suicide. So to say that somebody successfully completed suicide is not something that we need to be saying. Instead, you can say that a person completed suicide just as my cousin completed suicide, but by no means does that make it, make it a success. how you can get involved. So we've talked about some of the ways that you can recognize the signs and the people around you and what you should do if you do recognize those signs. But how you can get involved in a bigger span is by contacting the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. They have a very easily accessible website. It is AFSP.org and I'm a federal advocate for the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. You can visit their website. They have hundreds of different resources for you including understanding what suicide is, preventing it, coping with the loss of a family member due to suicide, and they also have lots of links to advocacy and public policy. In conclusion today, I'd like to share with you one really easy opportunity that all of you all can use to get involved in the field of suicide prevention. Just last week it was confirmed that Bellarmine University is going to be hosting a suicide prevention walk on April 24th. So I hope that all of you will reach deep down into your hearts and understand that 80% of the population know somebody who has either thought about or attempted to commit suicide. With that information in mind, I hope that you'll come and walk with me and become a part of the solution for ending suicide. Thank you.